Hello friends, welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. After the last video I was thinking if flying holds is integrated into the G1000 NXI. And sure enough, today Working Title team released an update that made it possible to fly the holds. So the new update is in the marketplace and the revision number is 050. And we will go through the release loads. I'll try to explain what has changed from the 0.4.0 .0 and we'll demonstrate how to fly a hold uh, after takeoff. Let's jump into the cockpit and let's first power down the aircraft and start our engines and then we will discuss the release notes of the new version. Uh, we are with Bonanza G36, fairly easy aircraft to start, make sure Pro RPM, prop RPM and mixture goes to full. Open the throttle completely, turn the batteries on, and we'll turn on the auxiliary fuel pump. So we heard the pump, there is some fuel boost. We pull the throttle back and then open each half, half inch. We turn on the beacon and the nav lights, and then magnetos to both, and then we are going to start after setting the parking brake. There we go. We have a good engine start. Turn the alternators on so that we can start charging the batteries and we turn the avionics master to on. So now the aircraft has started. Let's go and start talking about what has changed from 0.4.0 to this version of the NXI. The biggest change for the PFD is automatic change of the CDI source when you are doing an ILS approach. Remember the last video we had to manually change the source to NAV1 by pressing this button and tuning the ILS frequency. Now it became automatic. We are going to set up an appro approach to uh, using ILS and see if it will auto-tune the, the ILS frequency or not. That I don't know and I don't see it in the release notes. Um, other things or other changes to the PFD is now we have a little bit improved or revamped FMA displays with new flight level change, speed value, uh, proper arming and active transition from white to green text as well as alerting the failed modes with yellow color and AP disconnect uh, with yellow color is now enunciated at the FMA. Um, on the MFD side, because I think those are the things that... Oh, one more thing for the um, PFD before I move to the MFD side. Uh, remember, ADF was not an option in the old version. Now you can tune an ADF station. Uh, this is in this is uh, this is now possible with the new version of the mod. And the other thing I believe is persistent wind option. When you go to the PFD options and select your wind option, it stays there. It is saved now. And when you restart the aircraft, it should be already selected to your final last setting or how you left the aircraft. Um, Going through to this, uh, over speed caution colors on the speed tape, which we will look when we are up in the air. Um, better transponder menu, so I'm not sure what it is referring to. Because to me it still looks the same, but I think they added some... Um, they added some background uh, variables to align with the ident events and sim variables for people who are using those to connect to their physical G1000 units uh, for a um, home cockpit which I don't have so I'm not gonna s s speak too much about that um, and I think that is all for the PFD side on the MFD side, let me jump up a little bit and get rid of this yoke and zoom in just a tiny bit more so that we all can see better. Biggest change for the PFD side 
I'll show uh, the holding patterns. But we have some map detail options here. It has all the details if you want to see everything around you, waypoints, airspaces, all that. Uh, we have a detail level 3 which declutters the map a little bit. Detail level 2 which also declutters a little bit more. And then detail level 1 which is bare minimums. Also under the map options you have topographic terrain or relative terrain. Right now relative terrain is going to display the terrain below you when you are at a certain altitude and it changes, it's dynamic. As you descend or climb it will start to display what's the next highest uh, obstacle around you. I like to keep it at topographic terrain. Now we have the next red weather radar. Uh, we, we have clear skies now so nothing is seen here but if I change the preset we should be able to see the weather uh, when we are up in the air. You have a legend that you can put here which gives you the altitude information and the color scheme of that. Uh, and you have traffic which means you now uh, are able to display the TCAS traffic information on the MFD. So those are the big ones. And the next big one is the, the hold or ability to program and fly the holds. So for that I will add a point where I know there is a holding pattern. Uh, that waypoint is an airport, Echo Golf, Sierra Golf, Stapleford. We will enter this and we will discuss about how to enter the hold. Uh, it is under this menu and it says hold that waypoint. We will take a look at this when we uh, when we take off and when we are up in the air. For now, we'll close the flight plan window. And these are all the updates, uh, as far as I can tell, uh, according to the release notes. There are also a lot of bug fixes, which I will not go through them all. Uh, but I'm going to point to the known issues. So outer large com knob only reduces the frequency, uh, which means the communication or the radios this outer one only goes one direction. Actually, it goes both directions for me, so I'm not sure. Is this the outer? No. So mine works both ways. This one works both ways. So maybe it's something for uh, some people. Sometimes the flight plan loading from the world map screen is loaded incompletely. So if you are loading your flight from the world map menu, there is a chance that part of that flight plan might not be carried over into the MFD. So that's a known issue. World map imports from Navigraph and Simbrief do not include airways. So that means if you plan a flight using Simbrief and try to import it using the world map menu and load flight plan, uh, the airways will not be carried over into the NXI. User holds are currently supported for the destination or for runways. This is coming in the feature. User holds are currently supported for the destination or for runways. Oh, so that I think trying to tell that holding at a waypoint is not possible at the moment, which we can easily try. Uh, let me look for just a waypoint close by to see if it's what it's trying to say. So Oduku is a GPS waypoint. So if I enter Oduku after Ecosol Golf Sierra Golf, we should be able to see this. So let me do that. Oduku, enter, and menu. The whole that waypoint is still active, so I'm not sure what they are trying to say there. I'll try to ask a question about that known issue. But anyway, I think this is enough talking. Let me cut the video here, take off from the runway, get up in the air, and we will discuss how to plan the hold and all that good stuff when we are up in the air. I'll see you in a little bit. Welcome back, friends. We are up in the air. And we are almost at 8,000 feet 
as you see and I'm gonna start with demonstrating uh, what you should expect from the annunciations when you are in mode. Let's say now we have a flight plan, we are far away from our first point. When I hit nav, nothing happens. GPS is in white text, which tells me let me come back on the throttle and slow the aircraft down a little bit and lean the engine by playing with the mixture and staying around 24. 100 RPM I think this is good enough for us We will hold this speed, I wanna travel slow Okay, so as you see GPS is armed but it's not active That is happening because if you look here We are far away from our flight plan So to, to be able to get back on course I need to manually get to that waypoint by using the heading mode and or manually flying the aircraft towards that waypoint so that's what I'm gonna do I will turn around and as we get close you will see this flashing and then it is going to arm it this is arm now it's going to activate itself and start flying the GPS uh, flight plan path on its own so that's one of the things that has been changed from 0 0.4.0 now you arm and when you get close to the first waypoint or close to your flow flight plan path it uh, activates itself automatically uh, 133 is now because I don't want to travel too fast but I'm gonna go for 24, 2500 RPM to pick up some speed as you see it's flashing because it's arming now it senses that we are close to the flight plan path and I think that happens around 5 miles uh, around the waypoint and then it will arm the next mode and uh, take you there the other change here if I drop the altitude to 7000 and if I use vertical speed mode to go down a thousand feet you will see this flashing over here Alt S is now armed that means it is going to capture an altitude selected when it gets there and you will see this flashing before it becomes active maybe we should descend a little bit faster to see it and I can just cut the throttle a little bit so that we don't speed too much But we are getting close to 7,500 feet more and you will see this flashing when I think we are two, 300 feet away from that selected altitude. Let's synchronize the heading bug. That's a good practice for piloting. So passing to 7,300, I think it's gonna happen around 200 feet or something. Sorry for that stutter, I'm not sure what's happening. This is flashing and as you see altitude select this is now flashing telling that it's now active and it is going to hold 7000 feet so that's the annunciation change at the FMA2 Alright so now we will travel and we will discuss the holds while we are getting towards our waypoint where we will be holding If I pull the flight plan that is the waypoint that we will be holding at and I will pull the Navigraph window to explain what that hold information means and we will just program the hold after I explain what it means so to properly fly the holds you need to have a couple information to enter the first one being minimum altitude is 7000 so you cannot hold at that waypoint below 7000 uh, holding speed is no more than 220 knots Leg time is one minute, so each leg needs to take one minute, and the inbound course to enter the hold is 263 degrees. Turn direction is left, and as you see here, it's a left turn hold, where we constantly turn left uh, at a one minute leg. And the fixed name that we will be holding at is LAM, L -A -M, which is also entered here as a waypoint. Okay? 
So let me get rid of the Navigraph window. Try to keep this information uh, or remember this, but I'll put this on the screen when editing the video. Let me remove the Navigraph window and then we will start programming that hold. Okay, to plan the hold, you need to come to the waypoint that you will be holding at. Hit the menu button and you will see a hold at waypoint option available to us now, which wasn't available in the previous version. When you hit enter, it's going to ask us the information we went through in the Navigraph window. Inbound course is 263 degrees. We need to enter this. Uh, this is inbound, not outbound. Leg time is one minute, which is correct. Turn direction needs to be a left turn hold. After entering all this information, we will enter and you will see a hold created in our flight plan, which is telling us that the aircraft will hold at this waypoint. And if you look closer, now that is the hold that we are flying towards. And that's exactly how it's shown in the Navigraph window too. If I pull Navigraph from here to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see, this always happens, I don't know why, it's a bug with this Navigraph thing, I guess, until they fix it. Every time I open this, it's asking for activation. I'm not sure why it's not storing this data. Maybe it's a security measure or something. No, do not load the flight plan. Actually unload this because we can see better. So I will pull the waypoint or the, uh, the airport that's closer to that waypoint, Echo Golf Sierra Golf. There we go. We are there now. So if we go closer to this waypoint and if I switch to low and route, you'll see the holding pattern here right and that's exactly how we are traveling towards it from um, from north in this case coming down and that's exactly showing and displaying how it looks like on the navigraph window because this whole information is also coming from the navigation data so we will fly there the aircraft will enter the hold we are dropping on speed so i need to increase the throttle and get back on speed because we are about to stall the aircraft when I was not keeping an eye on the PFD. But we'll get there and we'll see how the hold is going to happen. Let me pause the video here and bring you guys back when we are ready to enter the hold. Welcome back guys. We are almost about to enter the hold. As you see here, the aircraft will make a turn to heading 263 which is our inbound course and enter the hold and start turning left and it will stay there until we tell, uh, tell the aircraft to exit the hold so let's see and make it full loop and then we will just talk about how to exit the hold when we are flying in the hold uh, that one minute leg as you see we are about to enter and you will see the aircraft starting to turn there you go and this path smoothing is making it so much easier for the aircraft to follow the flight path watch the heading you will see it coming to 263 entering the hold well not quite there it's close but it entered the hold correctly now it starts to turn in the hold and it will try to follow this holding pattern as close as possible all right how do we exit the hold when we go to the flight plan menu when we come to the hold as you see the hold is active now and when you enter the menu um, hold on not not through here not through here no we don't want to remove the hold 
let's let's fly and to exit the hold item you need to activate the next leg of the flight that is my guess but I'm gonna wait until we make this turn and exit the hold properly after a full uh, tour in the hold because uh, usually you see an option under here saying exit hold and there is no such option here we only see the hold information we entered right so uh, let's clear this and we will uh, tell the aircraft to exit the hold by activating the le next leg I think that's how it's done if you don't have an option for under the hold menu to exit the hold so when we are making this turn I'm gonna activate the next leg of the flight and we'll see how that works whether the aircraft will immediately turn back to the flight plan or just finish the hold and exit the hold because other than that I don't see any other option than activating the leg to exit the hold speaking of which you might have three reasons to fly a hold one if you are instructed by the ATC to fly a hold on your approach due to air traffic two let's activate this leg and as you see now the leg is activated and we should see the aircraft getting back on track after finishing the hold pattern as you see it's staying on the hold pattern so that is the correct way to exit the hold uh, one as I said you can be instructed or the ATC might told you to hold at a certain waypoint during approach especially for busy airports where there is a lot of traffic two um, you might want to fly a hold to you know slow down or uh, descent to an altitude if you are coming in too fast or if you are late to descent that's pilot's discretion and three if you do a missed approach okay speaking of which let's program an approach and talk about the other change uh, that is being done to the uh, G1000 NXI let's select an approach into our destination airport so let's see if this is a valid one and let's select the transition we'll don't worry about the minimums for now I just wanna see the approach loaded and I'm just pulling this out of thin air so that's not uh, something I pre-planned for this tutorial so as you see now we our flight plan has changed but when we come over here you will see some different information displayed it's displaying an IAF initial approach fix for the first waypoint of our approach displaying an FAF which is our final approach fix and displaying a MAP which is missed approach point so these are new final approach fix is the first waypoint in your approach uh, I'm sorry initial approach fix is the first waypoint in your approach final approach fix is where you should expect to capture the glide slope and we need to descend down to 2500 feet let's do that now by selecting 2500 and going vertical speed mode and going down at about 800 feet per minute and we will cut the throttle so there is the and we can also use VNAV perfectly fine if you want to and we can get away from vertical speed mode we can activate VNAV VPAT is armed and the aircraft should now follow the VNAV hopefully if I haven't messed it up but that's not a big deal if, we, if I did uh, it might be waiting for the top of descent 
which we might not have so let's hold this altitude and see if we see a top of descent at any point in our flight plan I'm not seeing a top of descent so that tells me actually yeah let's just follow this a little bit because the V path indicator is above us which means we are below our V path and I'm not sure if it will ever come down so we will see we will descend uh, with VNAV and we'll do an ILS approach let's increase the throttle so that we don't stall the aircraft and I will bring you guys back when we are flying the approach so that we discussed the FAF, IAF and uh, MAP so that's a change to the MFD side and let me see if there is anything that I need to speak about um, in terms of changes we discussed the map decolader options map options where you see the radar topographic terrain or relative terrain so on and so forth or the legend okay so let me fly this and I will bring you guys back for an ILS approach because I started to see a top of descent calculation uh, right there that's top of descent so I will fly this, bring you guys back when we are ready to hit the top of descent, okay? See you in a little bit. Welcome back, friends. We are almost at our initial approach fix. So before we hit that, we will go into the procedure menu and activate the approach. So now the approach is activated. Um... Yeah, it is activated. And this approach activation is different than the autopilot approach mode. So those are two different things. But uh, we will fly this approach. As I was questioning whether the ILS frequency will be tuned automatically, it is tuned automatically. 110.3 is the localizer frequency and it is automatically tuned. So let me know in the comments if it's also automatically tuned for you too when you are flying with the NXI. I am curious to learn what your experience will be. So we are about to make the turn and pass our initial approach fix. We still have not reached to the top of descent where the aircraft should start descending down to 2500 feet. We will see how close it is because there is very short distance to descent I'm not sure if this will work but we will see we will see how well the aircraft will follow this and descend us down to 2500 feet that's a lot of altitude to lose in short time and we will probably slow down and from there, we'll take a look at arming the ILS approach or approach mode of the autopilot and we'll see how the ILS, ILS is uh, handled, whether it will automatically switch the nav source, which is the update to this version in the revision release notes. So we will see if that's happening as well. We will put it to test and we will end the video with the ILS approach. So while we're filling this, I don't want you to sit here and watch. I just wanted to point the arming the approach phase of the flight. And I will bring you guys back and I'm seeing some weirdness over there. As you see, there is a loop that the aircraft will make. I don't know why, don't ask me. This might be still buggy. Uh, but I will bring you guys back when we are ready to start the descent. See you in a little bit. Welcome back friends, we are almost at our top of descent, let's jump into the cockpit and as you see we are about to hit the top of descent, we have 1.5 miles before we start to see the aircraft descending. But interestingly I am not seeing the VPath indicator coming down, hopefully it will, if not we will just activate the vertical speed mode and descend ourselves, but it started to come down as I was speaking. So the aircraft should start descending and we will cut the throttle, slow down the aircraft and descend to 2500 and do the ILS uh, approach. 
arming the approach uh, needs to happen before our final approach fix, which is FF09 Niner left. As seen on our flight plan, it's marked with FAF. So you need to arm the approach mode before you get to this waypoint so that the aircraft has time to arm and activate the approach mode of the autopilot. So we will see that happening together. As you see, we started to descend. I need to reduce the throttle and let the aircraft do its thing. And I'm looking for that staying in the center so that we descend properly. And that weirdness is gone. If you remember, there was another loop to the left coming back to this waypoint it is gone when I armed the approach and when I got closer or maybe it happened when I played with the range but it's not there anymore I'm assuming it's a bug with the 0 0.5.0 but we are coming down and we are holding 135 knots of speed which is good that will give us enough time to get down to 2500 feet to capture the glide slope According to our chart, that is our altitude to capture the glide slope and our minimums is 179, which I believe we can also program here, aside from the approach page of the NXI, you can turn the barometric minimums and then we can set 180, 179, so we round it up to 180 and that will be displayed here uh, as barometric minimum 180 feet so that's another option if you forget to do this over there or if you don't want to do this when you are selecting the approach this is also an option to do it over here when you go to the timer reference menu we are descending nicely so I'm hoping the aircraft will stay at the selected altitude at 2500 feet I'm trying to slow it down a little bit more by coming back on the throttle and for the approach we'll go full mixture full prop RPM uh, when we are ready to make that turn into our final approach fix uh, I'm not touching it right now because we haven't deployed flaps or anything let's synchronize the heading one more time as a good practice the weather is a little bit cloudy at uh, Heathrow, we are that's where, where we are trying to end. We're trying to land, if I haven't mentioned that. And I will keep an eye on the MFD to make sure we are doing the things as we're supposed to do. So 1,000 feet to go. There is another top of descent calculation because we descended a little bit early due to our speed and as you see the arrow is now above us which tells us that we are below the VNAV path this will need some work to make sure it's a smooth descent not just stopping descending again stopping descending again this needs to happen as a active calculation or dynamic calculation as you descend and play with the speed and throttle but we are making the turn and the aircraft should start descending again here in a little bit let me see the speed because I feel like we are slowing down and at this point I'm gonna go full mixture full RPM and the other interesting thing is now probably you can't see but it started to display the traffic around us there was an aircraft before I started recording this portion of the video uh, it was displaying the traffic around us anyway there is the airport we are at a good speed so now we can arm the approach mode by pressing here so as you see on the annunciation glide slope and localizer is armed remember before it was GP glide path which is an RNAV approach uh, indicator so that means this has changed and the aircraft will automatically tune the localizer which it did as you see now we are seeing the green needle instead of magenta uh, which tells us that aircraft automatically switched navigation sources for us and now we are on profile and we can go flaps 
uh, one degree flaps or 15 degree flaps I believe in this aircraft or one level flaps and we have a second level but to do that I am waiting for us to reach the um, reach to the final approach fix to capture the glide slope which is not going to be a problem we are descending nicely and we are already on glide slope so which means we can uh, drop the landing gear but it's a little bit too early for us to do that right now and we looks like we have some crosswind where the aircraft is trying to correct itself speed is looking nice um, we are at the final approach fix almost and that after that we will see the distance to the runway 7 miles so we will drop the landing gear at 5 miles and then go flaps full and I will take over and land the aircraft into uh, Heathrow Airport hopefully you guys enjoyed the video about the updates to G1000 NXI and another eyeless approach with the NXI and all the added functionality which improves this aviation suite quite significantly thanks to working title team and their hard work and providing this to the flight sim community for free uh, at a payware quality I'd like to thank you one more time for being here I anticipated this to be a short video but turned out to be a little bit longer than I liked but I wanted to cover pretty much all the changes and everything one more time with the NXI and that's what took us too long to get to the channel is almost at 5600 subscribers so I'd like to thank each one of you one by one for the continuous support and uh, being a channel subscriber and being here with me commenting on the videos the other thing I'm gonna say is if you are not a subscriber stumbled upon this video please hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell to get notified for the future videos around Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, in the channel let's focus on landing and I will say goodbye to everybody when uh, we land the aircraft and vacate the runway see we are coming down nicely the speed is looking good we are at 3 miles let's drop the landing gear and let's slow down to our approach speed so that is 110 knots I'm gonna keep the aircraft around 110 knots we'll go one level of flaps that's flaps full for us landing gear is down and we are fully configured for landing I'd like to wait in GA aircraft a little bit more to drop the landing gear because it creates a lot of drag and it slows you down so uh, it makes it a little bit hard to control the aircraft and get to the runway uh, as soon as possible so we drop the speed a little bit so I'm controlling the throttle autopilot is flying the aircraft but I will take control here in a little bit we are coming down to our minimums now we'll keep the speed around 100 knots for now that is good enough for me and I will now take control from the autopilot by disengaging the autopilot and we will see an annunciation here in yellow text for autopilot disconnect as you see and I think we didn't change the tanks and that's why we have high quality fuel fuel quantity is high on one tank and less on the other one that's why the wing is dropping to the right side as you see here right tank is almost empty left tank is almost full which I didn't pay attention to and forgot about this aircraft so I will compensate for that manually by holding the stick and we will descend and get to the runway it's going to be a little bit challenging because aircraft likes to bank and drift away from the runway and I'm trying to control that by applying left aileron right rudder to keep the nose around the runway threshold and it's not going to be a good landing because of that weight and balance problem 
that I didn't think about. But we will manage to do that. We will cut the throttle slowly and let her bleed the speed and correct the nose with rudder. There we go. Coming down very nice and slow. And almost touched down now. There we go. We touched down. We will cut the throttle completely. No need to brake. We have plenty of runway. So we will roll and take a high speed exit, which this one looks like a good one to vacate the runway. All right, that's good enough. Let's make this turn and let's retract the flaps. There we go. We'll turn off the taxi and landing lights now. Our taxi lights can stay on. We'll turn on the off the strobe and we'll get back on the taxiway and find ourselves at the parking spot to end the video. I'm not gonna look around too much, I will just park wherever I think I should instead of trying to locate the GA parking area. I am tempted to go down that way towards the buses you see down there. And we will park the aircraft next to somewhere next to one of the aircraft that we see here or maybe towards that gate because it's much more empty let's do that and we will finish the video right there there we go i see the yellow line now i'm off a little bit but this aircraft is easy to navigate and turn around so we'll just take this gate in fact we are not a, an airliner but it's okay for for this video all right let's stop here set the parking brake and we will then turn off the taxi lights and cut the mixture and the rpm to stop the engine now we have the engine stopped avionics master comes off let's keep going uh, beacon can come off we will keep the nav lights on Actually, we can turn that off now because we are turning off the batteries too. Okay, so this is the G1000 NXI 0 0.5.0 with holding uh, flying holds is possible now. There are a good amount of changes to the FMA and the flight plan as well as the ILS approaches automatically switching the CDI source. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please hit that like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you in the next video.